Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Sin Bin. I've been sitting here having a casual conversation with a good friend of mine, Ronnie Brennan, a.k.a. Iron Lion. He's been telling me about things that are going on in his life and uh, shows that he is going to be performing at throughout uh, Virginia and some in the 757 and uh, is about to release some new music. So, hey, Ronnie, how you doing? I'm good, brother. Salute. CMB Reggae. Hey, tell us what's going on in your life right now and what shows you have scheduled. Okay, so 2024 has uh, been a blessing already on the reggae scene, seeing uh, people being active. We give thanks as always. Um, me personally, I'm moving forward, doing solo acoustic shows, uh, some band shows also with my Naughty Lions camp, brethren. So I call it the Naughty Lions camp because it's just my way of expressing how I work with so many different people. Um, you might see the Naughty Lions band tonight with one crew, one group of guys, but if I'm in another area, uh, it might be a different crew of guys. Um, but they're all Naughty Lions camp members, as well as DJs, um, artists, brethren and sistren that I'm willing to look out for in that kind of way. So continuing to book shows, working with new booking agents, and really trying to establish the East Coast from Boston to Miami. Um, so I have 11 locations, 11 of the major cities, Boston, Philly, uh, Boston, New York, Philly, Baltimore, D.C., VA, North Carolina, you know, South Carolina, Georgia, Florida, and Alabama, 11 states that I'm looking to establish. Uh, so as I produce and release music, um, re immediately on the East Coast, uh, I started thinking about the different media avenues for reggae music, CMB, reggae, right at the top. I said I had to call my man Chris and uh, let him know what's going on as far as the music. Um, produce a lot. I write all the time, create a lot of music, and I'm just learning now that one one project you might put a couple thousand dollars into, and then the other projects don't get the same treatment. So sometimes it's kind of hard to really focus on maybe what to uh, what to push because you don't really know. We're in a time right now where people are musicians and producers are battling. Do I release a ton of music through DistroKid or do I play their game? Because they kind of preach like, you know, putting some distance in between releases and things like that. Um, so as you kind of learn, as, as you learn what works for you, it might be different for everybody, but that's what we're doing. We're learning on that side of the game what works for you. I'm a person that has a lot of music that was never put out over a 20 or 30 year period. Now there's a green light. There's really nothing other than yourself saying, well, this isn't mastered properly. Um, so I'm not going to put it out. Other than that, you're kind of free to upload music nowadays as much as you want, mm -hmm. you know? So yeah, that's kind of, you kind of, so you're telling us you're, you're anticipating uh, uploading a lot of music in the year 2024? I upload a lot of music. I upload mm -hmm. a lot of music, but I, it's, it's, it's weird. It's a weird space right now because when you're dealing with true independent and major labels, they can offer you a lot of things that are just growth type things. Like, um, you know, who wouldn't want to be in a studio making music with the top engineers and musicians and so forth, like you already know um, the result of that. Uh, but at the same time, you, you kind of know what you might lose on the financial side too mm -hmm. and so forth. So a lot of kids and a lot of people nowadays are, are finding success on their own um, by being able to record music and, and upload music at home. And it just kind of, it's new and it changes. There are no rules. There's no time guideline. There's no, I might put a, I might be into this so song for a week 
And next week, something might come over me that's a whole different project, you mm -hmm. know, and it just keeps changing. So, again, I think just learning the discipline, how much time you spend on one, one project if you're a person that creates a lot, like myself. And that's where it makes sense where some of this, once you, once you grow as an artist and realize I'm not as much as a businessman as I am an artist, you know, or vice mm -hmm. versa. Your thing might be business and, and not art. And you just kind of learn how the balance or learn how to juggle the two. Mm -hmm. So okay. again, again, as a, as an artist, because I put, wear so many different hats, as an artist on the East Coast or establishing myself on the East Coast uh, from mm -hmm. Boston to Miami, like that's, you know, and then to turn, create a, media campaign or publicity campaign when releases, when I do want to put some time and effort into a certain project, have that established, same thing on the West Coast and then your, you know, worldwide structure. I think you can mm -hmm. kind of do that, like, you know, one step at a time. Take on uh, the East Coast and the Midwest, you know, then the West Coast. You can have those type of aspirations and get it done over time. Okay. Right so now, CMB Reggae on the East Coast is a major media outlet. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. Yes, sir. So so tell us tell us what shows you got coming up. So um, with that said, again, I started the year with the Respect Reggae Rhythms uh, Showcase and Tour. And for me, what that is, is basically all these years I've been performing for 30 years, you know, all these years I've been writing over Kutchy rhythm and, you know, your most famous and popular rhythms. I have songs again. That's why I'm like, man, I got so much music that I need to release. Um, because every time a, a song came out or, you know, we used to reach back for those popular reggae rhythms and write over those rhythms, but they didn't necessarily get distributed and uh, promote it so heavily, but I've been doing them in live shows forever. Now it's just getting them up online. And so that's where my, re this year started for me is respect reggae rhythms. I'm still look, I'm still working on the artwork for that. I'm, I'm booking dates, but everywhere I go, it's the same thing. Like I'm Kutchy rhythm, uh, Poonani rhythm, Stalag rhythm the roots of reggae music, you know, Studio One. Like, it's our job to uphold that culture. We were talking about it a little bit. Um, we we are the ones now. We got to teach the youth why roots is roots. Why, you know, there's the cry to respect the Rasta man and where this music really came from. It's like, it's like R&B without Motown. Mm. Studio One is that Motown. You right. know, that's that's Mo Jamaica's Motown. What mm -hmm. will R&B be here in America without Motown? It's the exact same thing. That was the studio in Detroit, Barry Gordy, you know, where everything went down. And for reggae, that's Studio One. So that's why we love that sound. That was the bad boy, the death row, the, you know what I mean, of its time. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? As well as the other record labels, uh, the labels that follow, you know, and we're beside it. So that's that raw raw, <laughs> so to speak. You know, it'll always be Studio One. Yeah. Foundation of this music, respect, reggae rhythms. So I'm just putting, you know, doing all my music, singing covers uh, in that vein to just knowing that at this point in my life, yeah, man, you keeping that, you carrying the torch, you representing reggae. And if Ziggy Marley took that tour title and ran with it, he would be able to do what Ziggy Marley could do with something. I'm working out of Iron Lion pockets. Mm -hmm. So, you know what I mean? That's why I say I'm still booking shows. It's an idea that started at the top of the year, but it's a great idea. Um, it re it represents what I do. It's for the culture, and it's growing. So I don't know when it'll, when I approach things sometimes, I don't know when it'll ever stop. Like I said, if something, if something else comes over me 
definitely things come within it. Like the single I told you about um, that I'm releasing, I'm still doing a side project with a dance hall single. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, like I'll be releasing songs for respect reggae rhythms. A lot of songs with just popular rhythms that I had already had songs over. But then on the side, I might have a dance hall project like this Cardi B uh, mm -hmm. instrumental that she just dropped. Um, Cardi B just dropped a new song, Like What, in the hip hop world. When I listen to the instrumental, it's a dance hall rhythm. Okay. So I immediately wrote dance hall lyrics to it. And I'm hype about it. Like, I can't wait to That's get it great. up and out. Yeah. And I'm like, whoa, like, I was working on this Roots project over here. Like, where did this come from? So, again, like, it's just being able to get it all done and juggle okay. it and, and, and type. And nowadays, polish it to the point where people, you know, appreciate, like, yeah, it sounds like you put some little time and money into it without just because you see, because you, I can sit at home and record it on my phone and post it tomorrow and, you know what I mean, be done with it. That's how fast things are moving is what I was saying. Okay. All right. Talk to us about Reggae in the Valley. Reggae in the Valley is one event under Iron Lion World Events. Um, just one event, which, start, which is based in the Shenandoah Valley, which is where I live, but it's not limited to the Shenandoah Valley. Um, if I wanted to go to a valley in California, we might work out of there, do some shows out of there, still under the banner of reggae in the valley. Um, again, it's it's just the name under Iron Line World Events. That's the company. Um, in the same sense, ILW Soul Session, which is the hip hop and R&B side of what I do, where a lot of people not really into the reggae. They just want the Motown, you know, in the 90s and up R&B. That's my Soul Session concert series in the same sense. So I've just been moving around, developing both. Um, and then 757 Reggae Explosion, RVA Reggae Rampage. These are all just different event title names that's, that, I, that stuck with me. Um, and concerts that I threw in the past where that I was just raw. I was young, you know, bright eyed, bushy tail with these great ideas. You know, I didn't know when I was doing RVA Reggae Rampage five years ago and more before the pandemic at Canal Club and the Camel and these different venues that are there for you to use. Um, you know, it was, I don't know if you had something to do with it, maybe, but I have stepped in and helped the elevators in Richmond several years ago. And, uh, <laughs> I'll open that show that night. I think I got some pictures and all of that. And, uh, the lead singer, I'll never forget. He was like, Papaya, he said, yo, that song is dope. He was like, you should let me do that song. And I'm like, kid, I don't let people do my songs. <laughs> right. I'm an iron lion. Five years later, he's the elevators. Right. They're huge. DC, what, is the what, DC, I mean? what is the DC punky reggae revolution? Another one. I was going to talk to you about that. Um, that was that's a situation where when I was a youth growing up in reggae music, uh George Michelo with Fast Lane International had uh Lucky Dube and he had culture. Mm -hmm. And one of the greatest reggae shows, concerts that I've been blessed to witness in my life was the Lucky Dube and culture show concert that I'm not sure if they, if they used to run it every year or what, but the African Jamaican connection concert was popular at the nine 30 club. Right. Lucky Dube and uh, Joseph Hill with culture. Some of you know, like I said, some of my close brethren now were on those stages 
with Joseph with culture. Um, so the DC punky re reggae revolution comes from my love for that experience mixed combined with Bob's punky reggae revolution and uh, the history of DC's punk Dave Grohl and you know what I mean? All of them just bad brains and all of that. Yes. Uh, the well, history I'm familiar. Of, I, I was part of that scene. Oh, yeah. 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 So, you know what I mean? Like, same way with Reggae in the Valley when I get the DC Punk. That's why I want the DC Punky Reggae Revolution series to take off. Um, big lover of HR. I've opened for him. Met him. Chill with him. That was a big, you know, big deal with me. Uh, big up Charlie Brown in Richmond for making that happen. Uh, uh -huh. So, yeah, that's what the D.C. punky reggae revolution. Again, it's, Iron Lion is a person that, on the business side, very creative when it comes to businesses and ideas. But uh, it's just been a process getting in a financial position to bring some of them to light um, for things to move faster. Things are starting to pick up these days, though. So... DC Punky Revolu Reggae Revolution might, you, you don't know who might be on the bill. Just put mm -hmm. it that way. But it's a concert series to answer okay. the question. All right. Is there anything else you want to plug? Um, yeah. As I promote the uh, Iron Line and the Naughty Lions band brand, um, I love for the people to know that that's my main vision. That's kind of like Bob Marley and the Whalers for me, but shout out to the Dub Setters. That's another a local band that offers me backing. Um, and you know, enough enough other crews. Root Setters from Philly have been a blessing. Um, shout out to Patrick and all that that he does up there. Um, and so many more. I can go on and on. But yeah, I play with in in different cities just to make it more financially easier. You might see faces change in the band or you might see me work with a different backing band uh like we were talking about statement band shout out Derek Barnett um Andy Bashford up in New York it's a small family when you start you know when you start digging in to the better quality musicians like I said the people that are versed in reggae and the roster culture um who are aware of Studio One and and respectful to the background of this music and where this music comes from and so mm -hmm. forth like that yeah Shout out yeah. to the radio DJs in that same sense. Radio DJs and press, you know, like a CMB reggae. Oh man, like we all we all we got. We all we got. So I mean, what more can I say? Whether it be reggae rock, roots reggae, dance hall reggae. You know, like my brethren uh, from, you know, from Jamaica say, yo, we love all reggae. <laughs> it's reggae. So we yeah. got to find a way to drop the vibes and support each other. Find something, you know, like I say, even in hip hop. I didn't know I'd be sampling Cardi B for my next project. You know what I'm saying? So human race, man. Okay. All right. Plug that uh oneness. One love. Absolutely. All right. Well, thank, thank you, you for joining us. And uh, uh, we'll, uh, yes, yes, we'll, <laughs> we will. Uh, Salute. We will, I'll, I'll continue to be in touch with you, Ronnie. We, we do have to catch up on some more stuff. Uh, anyway, uh, once again, for the CMB Reggae crowd, continue to tune in. I'm trying to target new original content every week. So Look, looking forward to it. I'm here. I'm right. hoping to see you really, you know, produce some of these artists and musicians. That's what we need platforms like yourself to become producers and help us, you know, get our music out there and stay in the people's face. We all need to work together in that way. Okay. All right. Thank you, Ronnie, for joining us and take care. I, Thank I, you I, for I, having me. I, I wish blessing. you well in all these pursuits. Thank you for having me. It's a blessing. All right, take care. Yes, sir.